And uh, meanwhile, uh, the mill over the uh, stove, uh, I mean, that time we had the, uh, that southern uh, chula kind of thing, the, the milk started boiling. So she smelled it and uh, she had no other way but to leave Krishna uh, down and uh, to rush away. So as Mother Yashoda is leaving, Krishna uh, is very angry because Krishna wants uh, one pointed attention of his devotee. He, do he doesn't want, okay, you do everything and then I will be last. He wants the first priority and the, along with that the attention. <laughs> Mostly we, we miss that but uh, uh, that's what Krishna wants. So he is very angry and uh, Krishna is biting uh, his red lips as mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. So he is biting his red, uh, red lips with the white teeth. And uh, our Acharyas explain it that the red lips of Krishna uh, represents uh, the anger or mode of passion and the white teeth represents the peace or mode of goodness. So whenever uh, any devotee gets angry, he should subdue that anger by uh, the peace or mode of goodness. So the devotee should try to be in the mode of goodness rather than passion in order to uh, uh, serve Krishna in Krishna's service. So this is a wonderful example we can learn and uh, then uh, by boiling the milk, uh, also we, we learn one lesson. In the spiritual world, uh, nothing is inanimate. Uh, everything is animate. Uh, like everything is, has soul. Uh, the milk can talk. Uh, the wooden motor can walk. Flowers can also talk. So everything is spiritual. Uh, everything has soul. And uh, so that, that milk, which is coming from the best cows, selected cows, and uh, the milk is thinking that Mother Yashoda's milk is so pure and so tasty. Why will Krishna drink me? Uh, I have no value in front of Mother Yashoda's milk. And uh, th by thinking this, the milk is trying to commit suicide by jumping into the fire. <laughs> so by thinking that, uh, the milk is started boiling and it's trying to jump into the fire. So uh, we also, uh, we can learn from this that uh, we should try to, uh, as much as we can try to dedicate our life in the service of Krishna, it is wonderful. Because if we are not serving Krishna, our life is useless, as uh, the milk is also thinking. So um, going forward, uh, as Mother Shoda leaves Krishna, Krishna starts, uh, sorry, so, so Krishna was very angry. He is biting his lips and he broke the pots, he created a mess, there are yogurt all over and we can see the stone pieces all over, it's, it's so mess. And uh, Krishna is missing, <coughs> Krishna is not there. <laughs> so Mother Yashoda came back and concluded that uh, it is a work of Krishna because he was the only person there, no one else. So uh, now she followed the butter uh, footprints of Krishna everywhere. So uh, she followed the footprints and not only the footprints, there was a tinkling sound of Krishna's bells also and uh, she started following and finally uh, she found that Krishna was sitting uh, on a grinding mortar which was upside down but she came from the back side and she saw that Krishna is feeding butter to all the monkeys. So she was more angry that okay if he eats butter by himself that is okay. But he is giving to monkeys who always create trouble for me. Monkeys are like in Vrindavan a big mess. Now also we can see that they are literally like uh, creating trouble for the devotees. <laughs> Sometimes they take uh, uh, like uh, furs or like spectacles or every time. So that time also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, beads, bead bags. <laughs> so that time also uh, it was a big trouble. The monkeys were a big trouble for Mother Yashoda. They will sometimes break the pot, sometimes steal the butter, sometimes do something. So Mother Yashoda was not very happy with the monkeys. And now when Mother Yashoda came, Krishna, it was Krishna's back. Krishna was not able to see Mother Yashoda, but he saw in the eyes of monkeys <laughs> that Mother Yashoda is there. And monkeys already started running because they saw uh, Mother Yashoda is there and they were all, already they were like uh, uh, scared and they were thinking, oh, Mother will come and she will start beating us. So when monkeys started running and Krishna saw, oh, 
Mother Shoda is here, he also started running. And Krishna, when he runs, he never runs straight. Like we see all the kids, like they are always running zigzag like this. Somewhere when butter is on, on the floor, Krishna is sliding down and just running. And other side, this is Mother Yashoda, uh, who is a bit old and her bodily features are also a bit heavy as mentioned in the verses. So she cannot run so fast. So when she is running, her sari is loosened up, her hairs are loosened up, the flowers are falling down from her hair. So she is just taking a pause, gasping. <laughs> making her uh, tie her sari again and then again she starts running and she has a stick on her hand uh, because she was very angry she wants to take uh, teach Krishna lesson uh, so uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita aham sarvasya prabhu ho matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhadarte maam buddha bhava samar that I am the source of all spiritual and material world. Everything emanates from me. But we fail to understand the sweetness of Krishna, uh, the beauty of that uh, and the attraction. So in this world, whatever relationships we have, either it is a wife, husband, wife relationship, the mother and child relationship, every relationship have sweetness. There's a rasa. So when we read this verse from Bhagavad Gita, we difficult to understand that sweetness also coming from Krishna. He is Rasra. So when we see, read this, uh, this past times of uh, Krishna and Mother Yashoda, we understand that he is the source of these sweetness also, the rasas of relationships also. So so beautiful uh, to read all this. So uh, even when we think of God, uh, it is somebody who is very great. Uh, somebody who is very special. But in Vrindavan it is different. <laughs> uh, in Vrindavan, uh, they don't, like Gopa, the Gopi, they don't con consider Krishna as God. Uh, they don't, even, even though they know, but we don't want to uh, consider that Krishna is God. So, in this context, our uh, Acharya has explained that uh, there are five kinds of knowledge. Uh, the first knowledge is called the Jada or the materialistic knowledge we get in this world, uh, which is uh, compared to ignorance or darkness in terms of uh, the spiritual uh, sense. Uh, it is uh, nothing more than the, uh, the darkness. Then, uh, the second level of uh, knowledge is called the Atma, uh, the knowledge of the matter and spirit. So, understanding that, okay, I am not this body, I am the spirit soul, and uh, I am embodied in this body. Understanding all this we call Sankhya Yoga also. So uh, it, is, uh, it is the second level of knowledge. And the third level uh, is called the impersonal knowledge or we call it Nirveda Brahma Jnana. So uh, in this uh, we, we know the Mayavadis they study like God is formless and I am God, you are God, everyone is God. So which is like very confusing uh, to understand especially for the Bhakti Yogis. Uh, so, uh, at fourth level, it is Ishwara Aishwarya Jnana. Ishwara Aishwarya Jnana is the knowledge of uh, Sri Vishnu, Lord Narasimha, Lord Rama's with a majestic opulence. When we study, uh, when we worship them, we admire them, we adore them, we approach them because they are God. In that uh, uh, emotion, when we approach God, then it is called Ishwara uh, Aishwarya Jnana. And uh, so uh, there are some examples we see during Mahabharata and uh, Krishna's pastime also that the devotee has different rasas, like uh, he is in Vatsalya rasa, Satya rasa, Madhuri rasa, and suddenly the mood changes to all reverence. Uh, any any suggestions? Like when the mood was. Uh, Sakya, Madhurya, Vatsalya, any of these, and suddenly it changes to uh, awe and reverence, uh, like Ishwara, Aishwarya, kind of. Uh, any suggestion? Yeah, any, any person. Yeah, there are so many. But Akura uh, always in uh, the awe and reverence in Shri. Arjun, when yeah. he was yeah. you know, doing Bhagavad Gita, yeah. when Krishna showed his 
Yeah, he was in the Shakya Rasa and suddenly he was like, oh my god, <laughs> you are god. Isn't he a Shuddha Maya when Krishna Kiss comes up? Yeah, he was a Devaki. Yeah, he was a Devaki. Yeah. 
This is the fifth knowledge which is called uh, Shuddha Madhurya Gyan. And uh, their love is so pure that there is no tinge of uh, knowledge. We <coughs> study, right? Uh, jnana Karma Di Anavritam. Uh, so it's, it's, it is not affected by Jnana or Karma. I mean, no knowledge, no Karma Kanda. Nothing is affected. It's wonderful. So, uh, but we should be cautious on this point also that uh, being sadhana bhaktas, we should not jump from uh, the first stage, which is jaragyana, to the last stage, madhurya uh, rasa. We, we see in our, uh, in Vrindavan or so many places, there are so many examples when uh, people uh, wear dresses like the gopis and the dance. Uh, so these are called sahajiyas, uh, which is like directly jumping. Sahajiya, sahaj. Sahaj is like taking easy. They are taking it very easy, they are directly jumping to uh, the stage of Madhurya, which is not correct. We should uh, follow uh, the footsteps of our senior Vaishnavas, follow our uh, process of bhakti and uh, gradually under the direction of spiritual master, uh, we should progress on this path. So uh, now, the, this is the position of Yamada Yashoda. She is a simple village girl. But Krishna is who is the supreme personality and he is running uh, in fear. He is running in fear by Mother Yashoda, which is like very inconceivable because Krishna is fearful. <laughs> who is not supposed to be, uh, he is a who fear personified, fears Krishna. So uh, here uh, I have one question, uh, if someone can suggest me please, that was Krishna really fearful or he was just acting that he, he is fearful? We had a word from actually stick for. You had a doubt or you were engaging uh, us in the discussion? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also, after studying only, I realized. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> Hari Parshat Prabhuji explains very well that uh, he was actually yeah. very fearful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in this context, actually, uh, there is one text also uh, by Queen, Queen Kunti's uh, prayers which is uh, one uh, Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, Chapter 8, Text 31, where uh, Queen Kunti says, My dear Krishna, Yashoda took up a rope to bind you when you committed an offense, and your perturbed eyes <coughs> over flooded with tears, which washed the mascara of your eyes, and you were afraid, though fear personified is afraid of you. This sight is very bewildering to me. And yes, because Mother Yashoda's parental love is overpowered Krishna's majesty, that's why Krishna is fearful. So here also, because Mother Yashoda's love is too intense that Krishna forgot his majesty. He is thinking, I'm I'm Mother Yashoda's child and I am fear, I'm fearful. <laughs> so uh, I would just like to conclude uh, because we read till this verse where uh, that Every uh, year in the month of Karthik, we celebrate this pastime. Here, Lord Krishna is tied. <coughs> he was chastised by Mother Ishoda. Uh, ideally, we should be we should not be happy about oh some kid is got got tied. He is chastised. But we are keeping the picture of this pastime, worshiping uh, every day in the month of Karthik. So uh, why actually we are doing that is since it is shown that the devotee's unconditional love, unconditional, unmotivated love is far superior and then Krishna's love towards his devotee. So it is an exchange of from both sides and that is like the highest uh, pleasure in the path of bhakti, highest realization.